The harrowing sound of air raid sirens warn Ukrainians of the mounting threat of attack from the sky. As Russian President Vladimir Putin announces a special military operation against his neighbor, February 24, 2022. It begins. The capital, Kyiv, coming under attack by Russian forces, attempting to overthrow Ukraine's democratically elected government. Wartime President Volodymyr Zelensky defiant. His dispatches from Kyiv's abandoned streets become a profile of courage, and a new face of democracy in Europe emerged. Russia counted on capturing Ukraine within five days. They had no idea who they were up against. Despite being outgunned and outnumbered, Ukrainian soldiers fought off the Russian army's attempts to seize Kyiv and its surrounding area. But Ukrainians alleged graphic evidence of killings and torture were uncovered in the aftermath. This is a deliberate, cold-blooded and long-planned invasion. Since day one, the world's most powerful military alliance rallied behind Ukraine's unyielding resistance. We will be imposing sanctions on President Putin and his fellow architects of this barbaric war. Supporting the nation's defense without ever firing a shot at nuclear-armed Russia. We're facilitating a significant flow of weapons and systems to Ukraine from our allies. With Western weapons arriving in greater numbers, Ukraine seized momentum in the war. Austria. Gradually liberating their land, including much of the Kharkiv region in the northeast. Then in November, they notched their most significant victory to date, as Russia relinquished her son in the south, the only regional capital it managed to capture after invading. But the onset of winter brings new difficulties, with rocket and drone strikes targeting Ukraine's electricity grid now routine. The nationwide blackouts have become the latest emblem of the human toll of the war. It doesn't matter how difficult it will be, we will survive, and we will survive this winter against all odds. While Ukraine has rewritten the narrative of this invasion, according to the Institute for the Study of War, these areas in red are still held by Russia, meaning much still hangs in the balance as the war grinds through the 10-month mark with no peace in sight. For City News, I'm Karen Siolin.